Hey, uh, my name is Heather and I am wanting this class to be for people who do manual labor work that's somewhat repetitive or that either they're standing there doing something for a long time or sitting doing something for a long time, some, uh, more specifically with your hands. So that could be trimming, um, but it, it could be doing many different things. Um, sitting there for a long time working with your hands with your head hanging and all that good stuff So uh, let's look at some of the yoga poses that help to relieve or sort of like counteract um, Long periods of time doing that So find some pillows or something like pillows, cow cushion, couch cushions, <laughs> cow cushions um, Or or if you have yoga blocks that would work great to sit on Okay, because I want you to try to sit up so that your hips are higher than your knees. And then you're going to need also a yoga strap or something to use as a yoga strap, like a belt, a tie, um, like a dishcloth, something, okay? It'd be more like a towel, I think, than a dishcloth. It needs to be um, long-ish, all right? So pause if you need to, go grab that stuff, and then... Meet me in a comfortable seated position. Sit up tall, rest your hands on your thighs and close your eyes. It doesn't matter what seated position you took, but notice it, notice how you chose to sit and also notice, is it actually comfortable for you? Is there a way that you could position your body that would make it more comfortable? Please do that now. Once you start to feel a little bit more easy in your seat, notice your breath. And if you've done yoga before, you probably already are breathing more deeply. But you, if you don't really do yoga, you, it might be sort of different to notice your breath. Now that you've noticed it, just begin to take deeper breaths, filling first the bottom of your lungs, then the middle of your lungs, and then the top of your lungs, so that your whole chest and back expand 360. And then as you exhale, exhaling from the top of your lungs all the way to the bottom, all the way to the bottom of your belly button, all the way to the bottom of your pelvic floor, and then do a gentle little squeeze of your pelvic floor and your belly button at the end of your exhale. Release that as you begin to inhale again. Imagine you filling up first your belly, then the middle of your chest, and then the top of your lungs. And exhaling in the opposite direction fully with that little contraction at the end of your tummy and pelvic floor. And keep that up. Best you can, breathing through your nose for the inhale and the exhale. And don't strain to take deeper breaths. Take deeper breaths without straining for it. I didn't say how much deeper. You might be a person who like tries as hard as they can at everything. And that's, you know, that's a thing. Um, but with our breath and really with all the yoga poses, we're going to give our 80%. <laughs> okay, So we're not trying to overdo anything or do it to the greatest ability possible or pushing the envelope there. We're just sort of staying in uh, comfort to mild, mildly uncomfortable zone. Okay, No real strain. Effort, yes, but no strain. And take another deep breath. Just 
start to open your eyes. Okay, keep your deep breathing. I'm gonna start to do wrist circles. So just sort of like hula hands, all right? With your elbows bent, your arms, shoulders are relaxed, and you're just really focusing on your wrists right now. Breathing still deeply, start to go in the opposite direction. Okay, and then you're gonna do like a slow wave. So you're gonna lift your fingers and bring them back towards your forearms, and then bring your fingers back toward your uh, forearms, the other side of your forearms, so going back and forth. As you breathe and sit up tall, relax your shoulders, the sides of your neck, soften your face. Okay, now reach your arms overhead and open your fingers as wide as you can. And then close your fingers. If you've been sitting with the same shin in front the whole time, you might switch. So open your hands as wide as you can and then close your fingers tightly and we're gonna go back and forth. Starting out sort of slow and then start to pick up the pace. And I want you to try to go as fast as you can until your hands get so tired and wrists get so tired that you almost can't even do it anymore. So keep going and breathing as you open and shut them as quickly as you can. It gets a little sloppy and it starts to get sort of painful in a weird way. Awesome, and now rest the back of your hands on your thighs, relax your shoulders and close your eyes and just feel, feel for things. Okay, and opening your eyes. If you're sitting on something, you're gonna move it out of your way, but keep it so it's, Actually, you might not need it again, but um, yeah, just move it so it's a little bit further away from you, off of your mat. And then big toes together, knees wide, sit your hips back towards your heels for child's pose. Stretch your arms forward and bring your forehead to the floor. But when you stretch your arms forward, walk your hands far enough forward that your elbows are not touching the ground. Forehead down. And then press your palms down really firmly, press your fingertips down, and then from there, put your butt a little closer to your heels. So you start to really feel that stretch in your shoulders. Breathe. Imagine taking your breaths mostly into your upper back, the back of your body in this position. Most of our lung capacity is found in the back of, uh, or in our back, which is sort of weird to think about our lungs being up front, but actually more of the space that the lungs take up is in the back of our body. Pretty interesting, another breath. So now as you inhale, you're gonna come up onto your fingertips and lift your palms away from the ground. If you're not looking at the screen, if you would just take a second and look and look at what my hands are doing, because I really need you to lift your palms up as high as you can. Take an inhale. And then as you exhale, you're gonna press your palms down and lift your fingers and your thumbs. So inhale, coming up to your fingertips, lifting your palms. And then exhale and press your palms down, lift your fingers. And as best you can, keep breathing through your nose. Nice, full, deep breath. Inhaling, lift your palms. Exhale, press your palms down, lift your fingers. Inhale, lift your palms, press your fingers down, your thumbs down. Really grip the floor with your fingertips and thumb tips. And then as you exhale, sort of the similar feeling of gripping the floor almost with the outer edges, the perimeter of your palms. Again, inhale, lifting up to your fingertips. Exhale, press down your palms, lift your fingers. Okay, stay in this position, walk your upper body and arms over to the right, and then press your right hand on top, uh, left hand on top of your right, and bring your forehead to the ground. And breathe. 
And take another big breath and just side stretch. Take another deep breath here. And then walk your over, upper body over to the left. And place your right hand on top of your left hand. Once you get there, rest your forehead on the ground. Breathe. Press your top hand into your bottom hand as you breathe deeply into the right side of your lungs. Take a deep inhale and exhale here. And rise up onto your hands and knees. Okay, place the back of your wrists on, or uh, not of your wrists, but your hands on the ground. Spread your fingers wide and press your thumb tips down. If it's too uncomfortable for you to turn your fingers to face your knees, you might try instead of turning your fingers to face each other. It's a little bit less of a stretch, a little bit easier rotation for your wrists. Really press your fingertips down and your thumb tips. Excellent, and then come up off of your wrist for a second, tuck your toes underneath your feet, and sit back on your heels. And we'll just do a little circles, a uh, little wrist circles here and work that out. Okay, so in this position, if it's too much to sit on your heels, that's normal. You might actually just stand on your knees. You'll still get a stretch at the bottom of your feet. Um, take your pointer finger and your thumb to touch. Take your finger next to that one, your middle finger, to touch your thumb, and then index finger and pinky. And we're gonna go back and forth. Just do a little bit more work for some of the smaller muscles that work our fingers. Your fingers, your hands are like puppets. All of the uh, movement comes actually from the muscles that are mostly found, 99% found in your forearms actually. Your hands are mostly just tendons and ligament and fat and blood and blood vessels and nervous system tissue. All right, wiggle your fingers, come back to hands and knees, and gently tap the top of your feet on the ground. All right, so for this one, you might take your knees a little further back to add to the challenge if you want to have a challenge here, or take your knees closer to the back of your uh, wrists to make this a little easier. We're going to lift up onto your fingertips again like we did when we were in child's pose and then come back down onto your palms. And do this a couple times. Don't bend your elbows and keep your shoulders away from the sides of your neck, okay? So keep your chest lifted, not dropping down as you do these little hand push-ups. All right? And again, it's harder the further your knees are back, the more weight that your uh, hands have to pick up. So if you want this to be challenging, um, you could actually make it more challenging the further your knees are away. You could even do, try to do this in plank pose if you want. All right, palms down. Now tuck your toes underneath your feet for downward facing dog, but keep your knees bent and take your feet out kind of wide, almost as wide as your own mat at least. 
Lift your butt up behind you, take your head between your ears, draw your low ribs in, breathe. Your head between your ears, take your head between your arms. <laughs> One more breath here. Come back down onto your knees. The next little exercise is called scapula push-ups. Press into your palms, keep your elbows straight, and lift the back of your heart up. So just the back of your heart, not your butt. And then drop your chest between your arms so your shoulder blades come together on your back. But don't let your shoulders go up towards your ears. Press your palms and fingertips down, lift the back of your heart up, and keep pressing down, keep your elbows straight as your chest drops to the ground, toward the ground, and go back and forth. Just feel your scapula pull apart as you lift your chest, and feel your scapula, your shoulder blades come together towards your spine when your chest drops. And again, try as hard as you can, focus on not bending your elbows as you do this. All right, keep your head lifted. Don't drop your head as you do it. Keep your head in line with your spine. A couple more times. Then you press the floor away with your palms and fingertips. Excellent. Come off your wrists again for a moment by bringing your elbows down onto whatever pillows you've got. So if you've got pillows, a bolster, you've got yoga blocks, you're going to put your elbows on that and then press your palms together. Start to walk your knees back and drop your chest toward the ground, bringing your forehead, if it touches, to the bolster or whatever you're using underneath your elbows. If this is already a huge stretch for the back of your arms and shoulders, then you don't need to go any further. You're here. That's good. Hips above knees. If you want to take this into a deeper stretch or you feel like you can, you're going to bring your thumbs toward the back of your neck and breathe deeply there. If your chest starts to sag toward the ground and it's not terribly uncomfortable, you can allow that to happen. That will deepen the stretch here of your shoulders. Nice, slow, deep inhales and exhales. So if it's uncomfortable to let your chest drop, like you practiced just a second ago, try to lift your chest away from the ground instead. Okay, if your hands are toward the back of your neck, you're going to bring your hands down. Interlace your fingers. Press your elbows down. Lift your chest away from the ground, even if it's already lifted. Keep pressing your elbows down and sort of dig them into whatever surface they're on and pull them back towards you so that your chest lifts and your head comes forward toward your hands. Your chin is going to come close to your thumbs and then press down and forward to bring your chest back, bringing your hips back again and slowly come down. But this time, don't let your chest drop all the way. Okay, so we're lifting ourselves up basically with the pressure of our elbows. So push your elbows down, lift your chest up and draw your head closer to your uh, uh, thumbs. Push down, lift up and slowly lower back down as your hips draw back. Okay, and we're going to go back and forth. If you're confused about what's happening and you haven't looked at me yet, go ahead and look at what I'm doing and try to do that. So it's mostly this elbow pressure pushing down, lift the chest, come forward, bring my chin toward my uh, thumbs, <laughs> and then lifting back up like we practice lifting our chest and then slowly dropping back down, but not going all the way into the super loosey-goosey spine. Okay, one more time, come forward. You're just going to hold here, tuck your tailbone, push your elbows down, keep your head lifted. Awesome. From this position, walk your knees forward. Good. And then sit back on your heels. You don't have to have your toes tucked under. You're just going to kind of swing your arms in front of you and back. And change, like alternate which arm swings on top. Okay. So once again, move your props off of your mat. Hands underneath, shoulders on the floor. Press into your palms and fingertips at the same time. Tuck your toes. 
Go back to downward facing dog, take a breath. Now take your feet out wide, turn your toes out. And walk your hands back to your feet and as you do, bend your knees deeply, bring your butt into squat pose. You might be lifted up onto your ball of your feet for squat pose and that's okay. Your hips might not be as low as mine, that's also okay. You're gonna walk forward again, back to downward facing dog. With your feet wide, toes turned out. Take a deep breath. On your exhale, walk forward, keep your feet wide, toes turned out, and then sit down at the end of the exhale, back to squat pose. Take a deep inhale here. Exhale, down dog. Keeping your feet wide, toes turned down. Inhale, down dog. Exhale, walk your hands back so that you can sit and squat down. Good, take a deep inhale and in malasana squat pose. Exhale, down dog. Inhale, down dog. Exhale, squat, so you walk forward for this one, and then sit down. Inhale after you sit, lift your chest, look forward. Exhale, down dog. Inhale, down dog. Exhale, squat. Inhale, squat. Exhale, down dog. Inhale, dog. Exhale, squat. Top of your mat. Stay there. Take a deep inhale. Exhale from here. Push into your feet really hard to stand up. Inhale, reach out and up. Bring your feet underneath your hips. Bring your palms together overhead. Exhale, bring your arms to your sides. Look down as you reach toward the floor. Like really reach. Put some effort in reaching toward the ground. Inhale, turn your palms out as you reach up. Feel the movement of your shoulders, the movement of your scapula. Exhale, turn your hands out as you reach out and down. Reaching, even if reaching toward the floor to help stretch the back of your neck and upper shoulders. Inhale, coming up. Really reach. Exhale, reaching out and down. And use the movement of turning your hands out to help you move the top of your humerus bone, top of your upper arm bone, out of the way. It makes it easier to reach up, reach out and down. When you turn your hands out, it makes it easier to reach down. One more time, inhale up. I'm having a hard time talking today, that happens. <laughs> Exhale, down. Excellent. So take your feet out as wide as your mat, turn your toes out. Interlace your fingers behind your back. This is such a good um, one to do when you've been hunched over anything for a long period of time doing something. You're gonna bend your knees a little, interlace your fingers behind your back, pull your hands away from your back, and begin with a little tiny back bend. You're gonna inhale, lift your chest up. And then exhale, bend your knees, lift your butt up behind you as your head comes down. And let your head hang. Let your arms fall back behind you. Let your shoulders drop toward the sides of your ears, sides of your neck. Breathe here. You can really bend your knees. You don't have to be afraid or ashamed of bending your knees. I, don't, I mean, I do know where that came from in yoga. So it's just a ridiculous, like, old thing that, that teachers used to teach. It's in hot yoga a lot. It's just ridiculous. Okay. Straighten-ish your right leg. Bend your left knee deeply. And then take the back of your head towards your left knee. And keep your hands as they are. Good. So you're like turning your chest so that you can try to bring the back of your head toward your knee. Left knee is bent, right leg is straight, breathing. Let's do the same thing opposite side. Bend your right knee. And take your hands over to the right, to the back of your head toward your right knee or in that direction. The chest is turning to the left, breathe. Right knee bent, left leg straightish. Another big breath here. Okay, begin to come. 
come back to center and bend your knees and place your hands above your knees on your thighs. And then sit so that your hips are basically in line with your knees. You can even take your feet off of your mat and get a little wider stance for this if you'd like. Push your right leg away from you. So your fingers are turned to the outside of your thighs. You're using the palm of your hand to sort of push your legs apart. Push harder on the right side. Turn your chest to the left and look over your left shoulder. Breathe. Okay, same thing, opposite side. Push your right leg away from you and turn your chest to the left. I might have said that wrong. Just do the opposite side. Bear with me. <laughs> Another breath. Awesome. Come back to center. Now press off of your heels to stand up. Take your hands onto your lower back with your fingers pointing down. Squeeze your elbows together. Take a deep inhale. Lift your heart. Lift up. Good, and then exhale, turn your toes forward and fold forward. You might grab your blankets or whatever you use to sit up on for underneath your hands, just to make it easier to touch the ground. Inhale here, rise up onto your fingertips, look forward. And then exhale, bend your elbows out to the side as you fold. And we're gonna do that a few times. Inhale, lifting halfway up, lift your belly, lift your chest, look forward. Exhale, fold. Lift your butt so your head can go down. Your knees might be a little bent here or a lot bent to make this easier too. Inhale, lift your belly. Lift your chest. Look forward. Hands at least shoulder distance apart. Exhale, bend your elbows as you fold. You got to lift your butt so that your head can come down easier. Knees a little bent or a lot bent. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, fold. Do wide leg forward bend again. Inhale, up. Exhale, fold. One more time. Inhale up. Exhale, fold. Good. Walk your hands so that your fingers are in line with your toe tips. Then let your head hang. Shake your head, yes. And we'll do that for a while. You're just shaking your head, yes, yes, yes. Shake your head, no, 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 no. Really letting your head hang for these shakes. Soften your shoulders, your face, the sides of your neck. Good, slow that down. Good, holding here. Make your head heavy. Heavy head. Let it stretch your spine. Another breath. Okay, shift your weight so that it's evenly balanced in your feet. Press down firmly into the bottom of your feet. Inhale to that halfway position, fingertips underneath your shoulders on the floor. Look forward. Exhale, press off your feet to stand all the way up. Back to the little back bend. Take your hands to your lower back, fingers pointing down. Inhale, lift your chest, squeeze your elbows towards each other behind you. Look up. Exhale, stand up. Okay. Step to the top of your mat, and then step your right foot back. Bring your right knee down. Awesome. And then you might want to use something underneath your hands for these runner's lunges. You can use your pillows underneath your hands, or if you've got the blocks, you can place them more directly underneath your shoulders. Inhale here, the right knee is back behind you. If you need, you can grab something to pad your knee if it's uncomfortable. But as you exhale, you're going to rock your hips back and straighten or straighten-ish your left leg. Lift your left toes and fold over your leg. And you're just going back and forth, inhaling forward. Knee over ankle, lift your chest, look up. Exhale, rocking back. And again, inhale forward. Exhale back. Inhale forward. Exhale back. Keep 
Inhaling in here, forward. Exhale back. Inhale forward. Exhale back. Last time. Inhale forward. Exhale back. Inhale forward. And bring your right knee a little further forward. Tuck your back toes under if they weren't already. And then stand on your right knee in this kneeling lunge. And place your left hand on your left hip. And then push your left hip down if it feels like it's lifting up. Point your left sitting bone directly toward the ground. Inhale, reach your right arm up. And exhale, side bend to the left. So you're reaching to the left. Receiving a deep stretch in the front of your right thigh and into your right hip flexors. So if you sit or stand a lot, this might feel really good or, or just might feel like a lot. <laughs> Breathe nice slow breaths here. One more breath. And reach up and over. Place your hand down, right hand down on the ground underneath your right shoulder. Step your left foot further out to the left. And then come onto the pinky side edge of your left foot. Take your right knee a little further back. And then come into sort of a deeper variation of this low lunge. You know, use your left hand on the inside of your left leg and just push. Turn your chest to the left. And breathe. So the tendency would be for your right shoulder to start to relax. Push into your right hand and fingertips and move that right shoulder away from your neck and ear. Take another long and slow breath. Bring your left hand down to the floor underneath your left shoulder. And then from there, swing your left foot back. Okay, so now you're in a kneeling um, plank pose, right? So tailbone tucks, push into your hands, look forward, inhale. Slowly lower as you do keep your shoulders moving away from your ears. Bend your elbows to come down, bring your thighs down first and your pubic bone pause. You're in cobra pose-ish, inhale. And then exhale, lowering all the way down, bring your forehead and your toenails to the ground. Push down to the top of your feet. Inhale, curl up another cobra. Shoulders down and back. Exhale, downward facing dog. Take a deep breath here. And walk forward toward the back of your hands. Inhale, lift halfway up. Exhale, forward bend. Inhale, reach out and up as you stand. Exhale, bring your arms to your sides. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lift halfway up. Exhale, step your left foot back. Bring your left knee down. And beginning runner's lunges again. Inhale here, look forward, lift your chest. Exhale, rock your hips back, lift your right foot, right knee is straightish or fairly bent. Fold over that right leg. Inhale, rocking forward, lift your chest, lift your belly, look up. Exhale, rock back. Inhale, forward. Exhale, back. Nice and slow, be with your breath. Be with your body as it moves. Notice yourself. So 
Take it forward and back one more time. And coming forward, getting ready for the psoas stretch here. Deep hip flexor and quadricep, uh, at least one of your quadriceps stretch, okay? So you're gonna walk your left knee a little bit further forward. Toes to, tucked under, back toes tucked under. And then come into a kneeling lunge from here. Place your right hand on your right hip. And then notice how the right hip wants to lift and your right sitting bone might be sort of spiraling out a little bit. Squeeze your right sitting bone in so that your hip comes down. Lift your left arm up, inhale. Exhale, side bend to the right and breathe. Nice, slow, deep breaths. And take another inhale and exhale. Next is our sort of a twisty hip opener. You're going to bring your left hand down onto the floor underneath your left shoulder. Walk your right foot further out to the side and turn your right toes out. And then bend your right knee deeply. Take your left right hand to the inside of your right thigh and push. Turn your chest toward the right and then breathe. why we did all those squat poses. This is like a half squat pose. <laughs> half squat, half quad, and hip flexor stretch. So we talk, I mean, it's pretty common to hear people say they need to stretch their quads, but you really only have one of the four muscles that make up your quadricep muscles that you can even stretch, and that is quadratus femoris. And Anyways, sort of a geeky thing there. Take another breath here. And bring your right hand down. Step your right foot back. Downward facing dog. Sorry, not quadratus femoris, that's a butt muscle. Rectus femoris or femoris, depending on where you learned anatomy. Take another breath. Good, look forward and begin to walk forward. And then sit down. All right, a little pose. A little pose that's actually quite a big pose. Um, you're gonna take both legs out in front of you. So start like this. Find um, your strap or whatever you're gonna use for a strap. This is where you're gonna need it. Okay. Gomukhasana is a seated pose. It might be actually easier for you to do this pose while sitting up on something. And I'll just go ahead and demonstrate that. Um, just so that you can see it. And if you wanna try it this way, because um, it is actually easier this way, sitting up on something. You can do that. Otherwise, you can sit on the floor. So both legs out in front of you. Bend your right knee. Bring your right leg underneath your left. And then step your left foot over the top. Now, it really depends on your knees for this. So if you're if this is just like too much, you're going to bend, unbend your bottom leg and actually keep that leg straight. And usually that makes it so that you can do the pose. Otherwise, bottom knee bend. And then take your strap. Your strap is super long like mine. You're gonna to wanna to fold it in half so it's just not such a mess. Hold the strap with your right hand and then bend your right elbow. Pull your right elbow further behind your head with your left hand and then move your right hand over more between your shoulder blades. This will just make it easier. Reach your left hand back behind you. Turn your left palm behind you to face behind you and find the strap. But you're not trying to bring your hands together. You actually want about a foot of space 
between your hands. Maybe a little less if you know you've got really flexible shoulders or more if you know you do not have flexible shoulders. Like if just putting your arms in this position is making you hot and sweaty, <laughs> then you're gonna want more distance between your hands. And start to pull on the strap. Sit up tall, pull, push your head back into the top arm. And then as you pull up, you're gonna let your top hand beat your bottom hand. So you pull up, and then with the bottom hand, you pull down and let it overcome the top hand. And you're just gonna do this a few times, up and down. Breathe as you do it. So if you start shaking, it's just like, whoa, this is crazy hard. Yeah, that's sort of why we're doing it. Not sort of, it is why we're doing it. So I know a lot of people are like, oh, I, need just, I just need to stretch, but you don't just need to stretch. You also need to strengthen. Sorry to be the bearer of bad news. A couple more times, up and down. Keep the tension in both directions, but one, let one hand win. Good, and then release. You can set the strap on your front thigh and just place both hands on that top knee and close your eyes for a moment. Come back to your breath. One side done, check. Okay, and start to open your eyes. So we're gonna switch legs, take your legs out in front of you. You can shake your legs out for a moment. Okay, bend your knees. Take your left leg underneath your right, step your right foot over. You're really just sitting on like the edge of whatever it is that you've got underneath your butt, All right? Hold the strap with your left hand this time. Reach your left arm up, bend your left elbow. Bring your left elbow further behind your head to the right with your right hand, and then take your left hand more directly in line with your spine. Right arm comes out to the side. Turn your right palm to face behind you so that you can reach for that strap a little easier. And then, again, we're not trying to bring our hands close together at all. You actually want some distance between your hands, and that's going to depend on your flexibility in your shoulders. So further apart if your left is flexible, closer if you're more flexible. And then begin to pull in both directions, pulling up with the top hand and down with the bottom hand. Now let your top hand win and pull your bottom hand up. Now let your bottom hand win and pull your top hand down. Excellent, keep going. Now, I really love this exercise that I learned from my teacher, Rafi Heron. Um, he teaches with Yoga Maze. Noel Maze is also one of my teachers, I'm name dropping, but I love those guys and I really think that they are amazing teachers, definitely some of the best out there. But this idea of strengthening your shoulders in these very awkward positions is sort of mind-blowing like people are not doing this and it's really important especially if you've got rotator cuff issues okay any shoulder pain stuff going on i know a lot of trimmers do if your arms fall asleep all that kind of stuff bad circulation um, trigger fingers things like that this will help push your head back into your arm sit up tall a couple more times up and down keep breathing Last breath. Awesome. You can again set that strap on your top leg, place both hands gently on your front knee and close your eyes and breathe. Take your legs straight out in front of you, shake out your legs. Okay, sit down. Take your prop to the top of your mat or out of your way. And actually, you might want to use it. If you've got pillows, you can take the prop and place it underneath your knees before you lay down or after you lay down. And then bring your knees into your chest. 
for happy baby pose, take your knees out wide, lift your ankles above your knees, hold on to your ankles, shins, or the pinky side edges of your feet, wherever you can grab, and rock from side to side. It's like a squat pose flipped on its back, right? This is a great alternative for squat pose. If you have a lot of difficulty with it, you might enjoy doing this instead. Okay, using your hands, guide the bottom of your feet together. Interlace your fingers around the pinky side edges of your feet and then pull your feet up over your face and then press down and breathe. Deep breaths here. Another long, slow breath. Really feel into where this stretch is hitting you. Okay, let your feet come forward. Keep a hold of the pinky side edge of your feet, though. Re-interlace your fingers if you'd like with the opposite fingers on top. Push the outside of your knees toward the top of your mat, away from you. Good, and then this is a lot like the pose called Bhadrakanasana Bound Angle Pose on its back. I mean, it is that pose on its back. <laughs> Another breath here. Really push your legs away from you. Good, and then start to release your feet, stretching out for Shavasana, maybe even supporting the back of your knees with your prop. Arms rest at the sides of your waist, turn your palms up. Scoot your shoulders more directly underneath you and further away from the sides of your neck. Tuck your chin slightly and close your eyes and receive your breath here as you practice relaxation for a few minutes. Do a cleansing breath. Inhale through your nose, exhale through your mouth. And do that one more time with a loud sigh. Inhale. Sigh. Ah. And again. back to the body, feel the ground underneath you, feel the parts of you that are making contact with it, 
towards the parts that aren't. Feeling the air around you and the space around you. Come back to your breath. movements now. You can take your time the next couple breaths to do any last stretches that you feel like doing. And then come up to your seated position. Once you're up and seated, sit up tall. Again, notice the seat that you chose. Is it the seat for you? If it's not, change it. And you can leave your hands as they are, bring them together in front of your heart. We'll end class with an ohm in honor of our ancestors, in honor of this land that is not ours, that we practice on, in honor of those that came before us that practiced yoga and taught yoga, uh, in honor of all of the people that made it so that you could come to class today, including yourself. Let's do one final ohm. Take a deep inhale. so much for choosing to take my class today. I really appreciate it. Namaste. And if you're interested in taking another like work related, work sort of counter um, pose, counter movement style class, let me know. Um, I've been thinking about some ideas, but I'd love to know yours. Well, and as always, um, I really am grateful that you took class with me. You can make comment, like, share, um, let people know that these classes are available. That really helps me. Also, if you care to make a donation, um, my Venmo and my PayPal account information is available in the About section on this, on my YouTube channel. All right, thanks. Bye.